Yo, yo, yo. Welcome back to the channel. I just spent like a lot of time trying to figure out my camera. I don't know. I've been having like Zoom meetings kind of lately. Uh, and um, so I, I had to like adjust my camera because whatever. So uh, I was just trying to fix that. And it's not really fun to do. Uh, so yeah, let's. <laughs> I literally don't care, Dave. I literally don't care. Like, don't tell me that anymore. Uh, how you doing? I know it's been a, been a minute. Um, let's talk about SPY and the the S and P five hundred. If we need to go look at the futures chart. Um. So the last time that we talked, what we were expecting was this rising wedge that we had here. Um, and if drawn more specifically, we were kind of drawing it like this, which is still a valid, valid way for it to be drawn. Um, we were expecting it to continue to consolidate, uh, within this range leading into FOMC as well as the CPI, uh, report, uh, next week. That is not what happened. We actually broke out of the rising wedge early. And as a result of that, we did rising wedge type things. Uh, market actu actually dumped all over itself. Uh, you had like a 2.5% down day. And then today was a really, uh, a really uh, consolidative sort of day. But you do have a reversally look to you here uh, on the daily chart. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm still... Dealing with some congestion. Ooh, that caught me off guard. Sorry if that was awful for the video. But I'm not going to edit it out because I don't do that. Um, so what we're looking at now is a potential support trend that's developing here. And if you look on lower time frames, I believe it also, it also works here. Um, I think I would draw it like this. Roughly. There you go. Oh, there you go. So you have a touch here, touch back here, and now a touch here. Um, and so you have more of like a bullish, uh, well, a, a channel developing here. I won't say bullish necessarily. Um, so I am expecting, and I've been talking about this on Twitter, uh, that on lower time frames, you are going to start to see uh, price start to round up and reverse uh, back to the upside. I am expecting a retrace and this to ultimately be solidified as a short-term support. Um, <coughs> going into the FOMC meeting. So let's just mark the beginning of next week vertically here so we know our timeline. Um, I mean, to be honest with you, it does make a lot of sense. I do think that you pop down tomorrow uh, and retest this, like the bottom of this trend. And then it does make sense for you to just kind of stay relatively low and consolidate, doesn't it? Um, so... Just be on the lookout for that. It could be a very choppy uh, play here, but also, like what I'm what I'm saying is, here's your you know 394 or so. If you can confirm that as support, you'll see a rally short term. Um, and if you break below this downtrend, then you're gonna you're gonna press down hard, uh, just like you did when you broke that downtrend back. I mean that uptrend back there. <coughs> <coughs> Brutal, dude. So bad. And then you can also draw a, but it is breaking up at least. That's a good. That's a good thing. My my uh, congestion. I can tell. Um. You also have this short term. Yeah. See, I mean, this is. It's pretty easy. Okay. It's pretty pretty simple going into tomorrow. Pretty simple. If you're above this downtrend. Right, which is, I mean, this is a crazy downtrend, right? Like, this is completely unsustainable. There's no way that you can just continue this downtrend forever. <clears throat> You're gonna have to cool off to the upside at least. Um, so I do think it's the more likely of the two to get broken. If you break above here, then you should see at least a short-term relief rally. Uh, and the first, the first uh, level that I would be watching would be this range of like 396 to like 398 okay if that were to happen if 
if then you break through that 398-ish level, I would pull my fib then from this top right here. And I would be measuring on that golden range now. So 399 to 400, okay? So that's that's pretty much how, how I would go about that logically to try and figure out where the next steps in price action would be. Um, it's also possible that you break out here. You have a you have like a bull trap occur, and then you continue to consolidate through here in the short term and develop somewhat of a an ascending triangle. Uh, even though I don't really like that pattern very much, um, it is something to look out for. And then I guess we can do the alternative, which is the bear case, right? Let's see. I mean, this does look like distributive structure. Okay, like this looks like it wants to break down and revisit. Uh, this area of the chart it just does I mean that that's that's you know if we didn't have the trend lines here that's what we would be looking at this as like this totally looks like a typical like bear flag kind of look um, as well as like a last point of supply within a Wyckoff distribution this being the up thrust after distribution up thrust <coughs> I haven't been coughing like this. It's like as soon as I hit the record button, that's what happened. If you were to break down, then what I would be looking for, and it could be pretty pretty explosive downward. Um, I mean, literally the next few days, as you can see here, you could you could maintain these trends here and be at 387 to like the 383, so 383 to 387 sort of range. If you lose 391 and this trend line simultaneously, I mean, that's going to be, it's going to be a, a tough sledding. I'm not really expect, like, my bias, full full disclosure, my bias, <coughs> my bias is, I guess, that whatever is going on going into this meeting, okay, like, I'm, I am thinking that the opposite is going to be the outcome, okay? This would complete this distribution in my mind. If you made this move down to 383.84 by tomorrow, holy crap, that would be crazy. I would say that then you are on very strong support because that would be this previous liquidity zone, okay? This is the previous zone that you traded very heavily uh, within this distribution. You broke up, you you know mounted it as support, and you distributed it through here, but now you never really mount, you never came back and retested this zone as support, right? Um, so that could be like basically the the sort of market requirement that that we're looking for here. And to be honest with you, <clears throat> I kind of like it. I kind of like the way that it looks. So what I'll say is, okay, because if this happens, okay, if you do press down. And you consolidate within this range going into that meeting, I would expect that then Powell's gonna send it back up to here or even back up to the to the ultimate downtrend. And if that occurs, let's just take take the chart apart here a little bit. If that occurs, this is a bullish look. I, I'm this is the sort of look that you that you want to have. You know, you come back and you supplant really strong support. You you create really strong support in this price range here. You have this accumulative structure develop, and then you press up and through for the rest of the week. This this would certainly be the most attractive look that we've had going up to the downtrend yet. I told you guys that what I wanted to see back here whenever we were looking for this 385 move was I wanted to see price. This was before we really had this rising wedge look, right? I wanted to see price come down to 385 and then mount around in this fashion before it gets to the to the downtrend because that gives it as a bull. That gives it the best the best probability of being able to break through, right? Um, <coughs> so those are the things to be looking out for. Um, and obviously it's not going to happen exactly like this, right? This is just a sort of look, uh, that it, that it could be. Alternatively, if you break up from here, right. And then you start to mount support going in here, 
I personally, I would, I mean, it still does have that nice rounding bottom sort of look. So if it has this like zigzaggy thing that happens, that would be even more bearish in my opinion. But I personally just would see this as probably a retracement on this move or even a double top occur. And I would be bearish going into it. I just don't think that you're going to, that this is going to build up enough steam and enough time. I think that it requires time. And honestly, if Powell jumps the market, right, he kind of kickstarts a rally with his speech or CPI does or whatever, I would still want it to come back and consolidate a little bit more, work its way up in that fashion so that then it has time to accumulate. If I'm a bull, like I don't really care, honestly, like whatever. I, regardless, I'm still going to short it at this, uh, at this trend line because that's the probability. The probability is in your favor if you're shorting at this macro downtrend because it is yet to be broken and it just rejected price again for the fourth time. Um, so this is a significant downtrend. And if you're, if you're buying longs as you're testing this, you're essentially betting, you're betting against history. You're betting against a historical price, price action. And in my opinion, that's not a very wise decision, but it's not financial advice. You can do whatever you want with your money as always. Just my two cents. Um, I still do like the macro chart. Uh, this is by far the best look that the macro chart has had in this instance, heading up towards this uh, this downtrend. And that feeling continues, right? I still I still do feel that way because you have all of this price structure now that you've developed out as a potential accumulation zone. Um, and historically speaking, if we zoom out a, li a little bit more. You'll see what I mean. What I mean um, is that now, if we can move this box, move this box. And make a new box. You can see that this now looks like a previous distribution zone. Right, you've distributed out of here, and you've since accumulated down here in this lower region, this lower liquidity zone, for you to then eventually press back up and through. <coughs> this is just a better. It's just a better looking chart. Uh, it has the the possibility within it that the market is ready for a mark up phase, uh, as opposed to back here where you just didn't have as much of that price history and the the potential for for accumulation to be completed um but that doesn't mean that's guaranteed it's just a better look than it has been historically um but yeah that's pretty much it i would say that i don't i'm i you know personally i do still see this local one as a distributive structure and that that does have to clear itself out and work itself out and perhaps this accumulation continues uh, and even, you know, you could eventually have lower lows. I'm not saying that that's off the table. I'm just saying that uh, as of right now, it's not the relative likelihood at this stage. Um, <coughs> and you guys know that I've been the person that's been sitting here going, yeah, I mean, you know, we could make new lows eventually, but that's not what's going to happen in the short term. I'm, I'm expecting that the rally continues, and that's just what happened. Um. I got to say, just looking at this chart now, though, here, you know, looking at, at this buildup and just looking at how high this thing is holding within this uh, this channel, I, I do I do want to say that perhaps tomorrow you do see that breakdown. Perhaps you do. Um, I mean, the chart does, it looks like it wants to do that. It just does to me. Uh, and I don't know exactly how to explain that, like, scientifically to you. Um or maybe not tomorrow, but I mean, I do, I do think that you break down out of here, uh, and you have that reaccumulative effort occur, um, more likely than I don't, uh, it's tough. This is good support. You're, you're at a, you're at a weird place. Don't go into it with a bias. You break to new highs. You, you have every reason in the world right now, and this is how I'm playing it. I am looking for long opportunities along this uptrend, even though I do think that this looks like a distributive structure and eventually you do break down and out of this and there is a bearish opportunity that's there. Why would I try to preemptively get into that bearish opportunity up here while you're trading up here when I know that as soon as it breaks this, uh, this uptrend, it's just going to 
dumped down the same way that it did back here when you broke out of the rising wedge, right? Like, why would I try and get ahead of that? <coughs> Am I really making that much mo more money in the in the in the grand scheme compared to the amount of risk that I'm taking on? That's what you have to consider. So as of right now, you know, you you got to be you, you got to be protecting yourself against theta if you're playing options, but um I think right now, until you break this uptrend, it's me personally, what I'm going to be looking to do is average further into uh, a long position that's set up for next week uh, because I, that is what I would assume is going to happen until you break the uptrend. If you break the uptrend, the opposite is true. Uh, so I would be looking for those uh, downside opportunities down to like 383. So um hopefully that was a good video hopefully i didn't ramble too much and it wasn't too crazy or whatever i kind of black out when i make the videos honestly like where i don't even know what's going on anymore um but yeah hopefully this was a useful video hopefully you enjoyed hopefully you gained something from it and uh well let's see let's let's do that fib one more time i just want to look at it just look at it yeah so this would be the first fib and if you fail at 384 then i would step the fib back like this be looking at 380 makes a lot of sense and then uh after that i would i would step it way, way back here <coughs> and i would say that the likelihood is that you would eventually retrace down to this 365 to 370 level um and i mean that would be like a uh you know pretty dramatic sort of distribution that occurs there and most likely you would end up uh at least retesting this 348 level okay so uh that was the video, and until next time, peace.